this is David with David's Tutorials and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make absolutely perfect signature lines for when you need them on a document such as on a lease or on a receipt for something you sold. This technique I'm going to show you has been so handy for me, I know you're just going to want to share this with other people you know who want to create documents that have signature line spaces. If you're like most people, whenever you need a signature line in a document or some other sort of horizontal line, you just hold down your underscore key and let it continue to make the underscore character for as long as you need that line to be. And if you need another line off to the right of it, you just push the space bar a few times and then hold down the underscore key to make some more line. Sadly, these lines that you create are never exactly what you want them to be. It's very difficult to space them left and right, to get the space above them just right. And if you ever wanted to put text underneath of them as a label, that also is a huge hassle. By the way, if you find yourself adding underscore characters to your document for something else besides a signature line, and they don't appear, you're going to need to change your zoom level. What you see here is a line with some underscore characters at 130% zoom. If I change my zoom level to 120%, which I can do by holding the control key on the keyboard and using the mouse scroll wheel, or by dragging the zoom slider down here in the lower right hand corner, when I get to 120%, you can see the underscore characters disappear. If I keep going on down to 110%, they reappear. This is an anomaly in the current version of Word. We can hope that in future versions, they will eliminate this anomaly. But if you want a more professional way to add signature lines in your document, other than using the underscore character, we're going to use tables. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. In this example I'm going to show you today, I'm going to create signature lines for two lessers and then lines beside that for the date they signed their name. And then off to the right of that, I'm going to create signature lines for three lessees and the dates that they sign their names. The first thing we need to do is to figure out exactly how we want the signature lines and the date lines laid out on your document. In this example, I want the lessers on the left with the dates beside their names, and I want the lessees on the right with the date besides their names as well. To control this layout, I'm going to use, as I said, the tables in Microsoft Word. To determine how many columns you want in your table, you need to take the number of columns you want for signature lines and date lines, multiply it by two, and subtract one. This will allow us to put invisible blank columns in between each one of these columns of lines that we have and keep them lined up perfectly. You generate the table by going to the Insert tab, then clicking on the Table drop-down. In our example, we want four visible columns. We want the lesser name and the date of their signature, and we want the lessee name and the date of their signature. That's four columns. We double that. That makes eight. Minus one is seven. So we want our table to be seven columns wide, and we're going to start with three rows tall, just for a starting point. Note that as we mouse over the table insertion grid, it shows us at the top how many rows and columns will appear when we click. Okay, there's seven wide by three tall. Click. By default, Word inserts a table with equal column widths. But let's adjust that. You can easily adjust column widths by dragging one of the divider lines. Watch for your cursor to turn into two vertical bars with arrows pointing left and right. Columns 7 and 3 need to be medium width for dates, while columns 1 and 5 need to be wide for signatures so people have enough room to sign their names. Columns 2, 4, and 6, we want those to be narrow because they're going to be our spacing columns. Okay, let's drag. Since we want column 4 to be in the middle of the page, that'll be the spacer between the lessor and the lessee, with equal space on the left and the right, let's start with that one. 
Let's mark the middle of the page by clicking the cursor in the row above the table, then look at the ruler at the top of your document window. If you don't see the ruler, click on your View tab, and in the Show group, check the box for Ruler. Now I can see the ruler bar that we have the width of the document as six and one half inches, so the middle of that will be three and one quarter inches. Now it's time to drag. From the center column of the table, that's column number four, I drag the left bar to the right, almost to the three and a quarter inch mark. Then I drag the right bar of this cell to the left to make this column as small as possible. Next, we want to drag all the columns for names as wide as they will go, starting with the leftmost column, and there. The column just to the right of the center will be the name of the other party, and we want that to be wide as well, and there we go. Now let's drag the date columns to be medium wide, wider than they are, which will make the spacer columns between names and dates fairly narrow. There's the left date column, and there's the right date column. You can see we now have columns for name, space, date, space, name, space, and date. Before we play with the visibility of the borders of these cells, let's add some text into the table so that we know exactly which elements are where in the table. The first thing I want to do when doing this is set the font for all the print that I want in the table. I do this by hovering over the table until the table selector box appears, then click that. Now I can set my desired print font for the entire table, which in this case is going to be Arial Narrow, 9 point, and Italic. With that set, I usually type in the names of the parties, but because this is a generic document, instead of putting somebody's name in these tables where, as a lessor and the lessee, I'll just type in lessor1, lessor2, I'll type in lessee1, lessee2, and lessee3. You can add rows to the table as needed. I've started in the second row of the table, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Also, don't worry about vertical spacing at this point. We'll fix that in just a bit. Okay, here's the table with all the signatory spaces identified and places for them to put the date of their signatures. The next thing is to drag the horizontal dividers down to make room for the signatures, starting with the second line. There we go. And here's the third line. And here's the fourth line. Finally, all you have to do is eliminate the lines you don't want to see. Rather than go through the hassle of eliminating every single one of those lines individually, let's start by turning all of the borders off. To do this, select the entire table, then in the Home tab, in the Paragraph section, drop down your Borders control and select No Border. This will make all cell borders disappear which could make it difficult for you to tell where your cells are in that table. Here's a bonus pro tip for you. If you want to see the borders in your table without turning on the borders, you can turn on Table Grid Lines. Do this by clicking anywhere in the table, which causes the Layout tab to appear on the ribbon bar. Click this tab. At the far left of the bar, in the Table group, click on the View Grid Lines icon to turn table grid lines on and off. Now these are view only grid lines, so even if you leave them on when you print the document, they will not appear. But they will tell you where your table borders are. Next, click in a cell containing text and on the Home tab, in the Borders control, select Top Border. This will also set the default border for your Border Add button. Finally, click on each text element, then click the Borders control again. Click, 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 and so on until you have all the lines you want. 
The great thing about creating signature lines and signature lines with date this way are first that they are perfectly aligned horizontally so that all the left edges and all the right edges of the signature lines line up with each other and all the left edges and the right edges of the date lines line up with each other. And if you don't like how wide they are, you can easily change it by dragging the border of the table cell. The other thing is that if you don't have quite enough room above a signature line for somebody to squeeze their signature in, you can always make it wider by dragging the bottom border of that cell down. By using words tables to put in signature lines in your document, you can easily control the length of the lines, the horizontal position of the lines, the vertical position of the lines, and even the labeling of these lines and make it look far more professional than it otherwise would. Please share this video with anybody that you know that might ever want to create a document that would need a signature line, such as a lease or a sales receipt, like I sold my car to this person, signed so-and-so. They will need to know this stuff as well. And don't forget to give us a great big old thumbs up down here at the bottom of this video and let the ranking robots know that you thought this was a helpful video. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so very much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial right here on David's Tutorials.